There are perhaps no characters out there who are as known for their unbeatable status as Saitama and the Hulk are concerned. In fact, that very issue causes both of them quite a lot of grief. You see, Saitama used to be an ordinary man who dreamed of one day getting into epic superhero showdowns. Once he finally got in the cape and tights, however, he learned a horrifying secret. He was too dang good at being a superhero. Pretty much every villain that Saitama has come across has been defeated swiftly by one single blowout knockdown pouch. Similarly, the Hulk lives in a world where he's also far too powerful. The Hulk usually rampages from city to city like a scared and angry child who is stronger than anybody else in the entire world. He's like a bull in a china shop who could accidentally turn a neighborhood into nothing but rubble in under a minute. Then poor old Bruce Banner has to wake up in the desolation his other form has caused. The few times we've seen Hulk in a world where he can really let loose are the happiest of his life. The same is true of any time Saitama thought that this bad guy might finally be enough for him to let loose. That's why, in a strange way, any confrontation between the two really wouldn't be a fight so much as a dream come true. Finally, neither one of them has to hold back. So, what is it about these two OP superheroes that makes them so unbeatable? Well, let's dive deep into the power sets of both heroes. Let's start with Saitama. His strength, speed, durability, and stamina seem to be almost limitless. While there are many theories out there about how Saitama gets his massive strength, at the moment, the answer is pretty simple. According to him, all it took was a simple exercise routine of 100 push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and a 10k run to get superpowers. That baffles pretty much everybody he tells it to, but he stands by it. Villains and monsters come up to Saitama pretty much on a daily basis, bragging about their strength and their speed. Unlike other heroes, he doesn't have energy beams or metal claws that he can fight them with. All he's got are these insanely strong qualities of his otherwise normal human body. His go-to move is the normal punch, which is to him like when you play hit one of your friends. For any monster that receives it, it's an almost guaranteed KO. In the end, each one goes down the same way. One punch to finish them all. The showdown he had with Lord Voros made it seem like he was fighting at his best, but even that was him holding back. He was able to take on the most powerful warlord in the galaxy all without showing his true power. Saitama hit Boros with a serious punch that was so hard that the clouds parted all the way around the world. What's crazy is that Saitama made it seem like this was also him holding back. How is that not your most powerful punch? Looking at that alone, it seems like a pretty one-sided showdown. We've seen Hulk get beaten up many times before, but never Saitama. As long as the Hulk doesn't show up when there's a sale going on, this is another one-punch classic, right? Well, the Hulk is a bit more complicated than that. You see, the unjolly green giant varies wildly depending on which Hulk you're talking about. If we're talking about the MCU Hulk, Saitama wouldn't even break a sweat. It's honestly doubtful whether Thanos with the full Infinity Gauntlet could handle Saitama, and he took down Hulk easily. Seriously, we never saw that Hulk come out again. Thanos literally beat the original MCU Hulk out of existence. The comic book Hulk is an entirely different story. Bruce Banner isn't just a guy who got hit by gamma radiation and became a big green monster. Nope, he's a guy who has dissociative identity disorder that, when triggered, causes him to turn into a wide variety of monsters. For the most part, all of these Hulks have these same powers. They're incredibly strong, fast, and are incredibly durable. Not only that, but the longer the Hulk fights, the more powerful he becomes. That rising anger only fuels him more. While every Hulk smashes the competition like nobody else, they are all a little bit different. The standard Hulk that you see in 90% of the comics is known as the Savage Hulk, or sometimes Child Hulk. He's the one who mostly talks like, Me Hulk, me want to smash puny human. This is a representation of Bruce's angry child self who couldn't stand up to his evil father. There's also the Immortal Hulk, or Devil Hulk, who is a manifestation of all the dark thoughts Bruce Banner is ashamed of. Then there's the merged version, Professor Hulk, that has Bruce's mind in a powerful Hulk body. For our purposes, though, we're going to focus on the most powerful Hulk. In the comics, Iron Man, Reed Richards, and a cabal of other heroes have enough of Hulk's rampaging and shoot him off into space. Hulk then lands on a dangerous planet known as Sakaar, where he has to fight harder than ever before just to survive. This survival instinct led to the creation of a new, more mature Hulk, the Green Scar. Once Hulk came back to Earth, it was clear that this new version was far more powerful than anything who had come before. When battling it out with the other overpowered Marvel hero, the Sentry, he tapped into a new level. He became the World Breaker Hulk capable of shifting the tectonic plates of a planet. Not only is this version of the Hulk the most powerful, but he's clearly more powerful than any monster or bad guy that Saitama has ever faced. This might prove to be a problem, as Saitama usually plays with his opponents before getting serious. 
If he does that with a world breaker, he might find himself without a planet to stand on. Sure, we've seen Saitama survive in space, but that doesn't mean he can live there. The real question in this matchup might not be which one of them can survive, but if the planet Earth can. Is it possible that the world breaker might finally push him to his limit?